Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and today I am going to torture you with some of my past query letters. Now you may think that, oh, Amparo has an agent, Amparo has a couple book deals. She's great at writing queries, right? No, no she's not. I'm going to show you every query I've ever sent to literary agents, not just the ones I've written in general. So these are the ones that other people within the industry have seen, and I really wish they never had. Now let's take a look at my very first query letter. Trust me, this one is the worst. So this is the beginning or the intro part. We have a very generic dear agent. Of course, there you should be able to place the agent's name that you're contacting. Don't just write dear agent, that's horrifying. Now the first paragraph is where you're supposed to set up the character, the conflict, and the world. As you can see, this is about someone named Howard Snow. According to the first sentence, he knows his grandfather is keeping a secret. That's pretty nice, I think that's acceptable. But if you continue to read, you never really get the sense of dread that that first sentence promises. And I think that's very important in a query letter. So if we read on, about to start senior year at Lazarus Town Preparatory School for Boys and Girls, this 17-year-old spends his days wondering why his beloved grandpa disappears sporadically and why no one can give him a straight answer as to where he is. And what's worse, Howard is forced to face the wrath of Orlando Wolf, a popular and ruthless bully that loves to torment him and his friends back in school. Barely surviving Orlando's cruelty, Howard goes to bed one night and dreams of his grandfather's brutal death at the hands of a dark creature he has never seen before. As soon as he wakes up, Howard is thrown into another whirlwind of lies and secrets when he finds out that his grandfather is indeed dead. But when another life is claimed inside his school, Howard finally learns the truth. His family belongs to a long line of guardians, protectors of a hidden land called Forsaken World. The town council has now given Howard the daunting task of going to Forsaken World to find the traitor who has murdered his grandfather in cold blood. But he won't be alone, for there is another guardian who must help him save Forsaken World his living nightmare, Orlando Wolf. Before we get into the actual analysis, let's just look at that word count, people. 115,000 words. I don't see a single mention of the genre. It just says, the first book in a trilogy for young adults, when we all know that 150,000 words can very well be the whole trilogy. Oh well, yes, I include my info or my bio area, but you know, this part that says at the end, and have recently left law school to pursue my lifelong passion for writing. That's nice, I guess, but an agent is looking for any credits that you might have, any writing, publishing credits. My manuscript is ready to be sent at your request. Thank you for your time and consideration. I look forward to hearing from you. Sincerely, Amparo Ortiz. That's all nice. I, I guess that works, but yeah, let's get back to the other part. The biggest problem of this query, specifically the intro, is that it tells us who Howard is in terms of what is his concern or what he wants. He just wants to know what his grandfather's secret is, which is fine, but I am very vague in terms of how Orlando, for example, is bullying him or even the type of beast that is attacking his grandfather. I don't really describe it. I never say what it is. I never even, like, refer to it again. Also, I mention what a guardian is, basically. I just say that they exist. They're protectors of a hidden land called Forsaken World. But then I don't explain what Forsaken World is or why we need to protect it. We don't have clear stakes or a clear source of conflict other than, oh, Howard and his nemesis, this strange, popular, cruel boy that we don't really understand. We're just supposed to sympathize with Howard because he's bullied 
but we don't really know who Orlando is. And we really don't even know who Howard is. We know he loves his grandpa, but what else? Like, who is he? Like, why should we care about this person? Why should we care that he has to work with his nemesis to do what exactly? Protect a hidden land? Okay, what? So far, this letter has succeeded in giving the reader questions. They're just questions that you're asking because you're confused and you need more details. I'm not asking to write more in terms of filling the page with more details, but there should be a clearer sense of personality regarding your main character. What are his likes and dislikes other than just he knows his grandfather is keeping a secret? Okay, fine, but why do we care and why does he care that his grandfather is keeping a secret? What is at stake for him? Because this is very much his grandfather's life. If he wants to keep a secret, that's cool. But why does Howard care? It's only after his grandfather is actually murdered that we care in terms of why Howard cares. Of course, if your grandfather were murdered, Howard, you would want to find out who this person or this creature is that killed him. But other than that, it's just why would anyone want to kill him? Like, can we as a reader get a clue or any hint that would lead us to realize, oh, this is a fantasy. This is a very clear fantasy, second world portal, whatever you want to call it, right? But we don't get that here. We just, it's like, it's kind of like Narnia, but that's it. Anyway, I sent out 10 of these and all of them were clear, obvious rejections as they should be. And I didn't query anymore. I just sent out those 10 thinking that I was amazing and I was going to get signed immediately. Thankfully, that never happened. So let's move on to the second query I ever sent out. This is for another young adult project. And while I do think that there are some considerable improvements, there are still issues. So let's take a look. Dear Agent, this past January, you contacted me via the Query Tracker website after reading the query I posted in the forum. You kindly requested to see the query and the first three chapters of Sever, my paranormal romance for YA readers. I am pleased to finally send you the sample pages of the manuscript, which is complete at 80,000 words. So why am I mentioning this query tracker website and why am I talking about it in the intro paragraph? Well, this is a specific example where an agent actually reached out to me after reading a version or a draft of the query that I had submitted in the forums where you can get critiqued. So in this case, I wanted to mention that because if you have previous or prior contact with an agent, you should mention it in the query letter right at the beginning because that will let them know who you are that will remind them why they're interested in your story and it could also help this particular query letter to get at the top of their list because there is prior or previous interest so that's just my tip you don't have to write it exactly like that but it's helpful to remind this agent of what you have and why they wanted it in the first place also note the word count is 80,000, so I definitely learned my lesson. I am better at revising in general, but it took a while to get there. So now let's get into the actual pitch. Here we go. As the lone shielder of San Antonio, 17-year-old Lexi Cruz is booked. Souls with the I'm not crossing over yet motto seek her services. Ass kicking. No soul is taken against their will on Lexi's watch. The last thing hunters want is a black and blue makeover from a girl. But even though she rocks at her job, all Lexi wants to worry about are acne and SATs. Too bad Vincent Moss won't let that happen. Not only is he the new douchebag in school, he's also a hunter with mad skills. Popping Lexi's I lost a battle cherry was easy enough. Saving his kidnapped family? Not so much. When Lexi discovers Vincent's dilemma, she's not sure whether to punch him or hug him. Vincent's also struggling with his poker face, especially since everything inside him begs for Lexi's help. 
but his mission leaves them reluctantly standing at opposing sides. To free his loved ones, Vincent must claim an unborn soul, someone who's still alive. And he's more than willing to do it, if only Lexi would let him. As for the closing paragraph, you have everything that's needed in terms of my preparation. I have no actual publication at this point or any publishing credits. So just saying that I'm going to study literature in the fall is enough. And then, of course, I do the housekeeping in terms of attaching and saying what you have included in the email so that the agent knows that you're following their guidelines. It's very important that they also know how much time and consideration you have put into this letter. They receive a lot of letters every day, so the more respectful you can be, the better. So let's go back to the beginning, shall we? I think this is a better query in terms of narrowing it down and being specific in terms of character, personality, and goals, and what the conflict is. But I do think that this suffers from an overtness or an abundance of like what we call voice. I feel like this query letter is trying too hard to sound young and hip and cool. And it can actually do the opposite. It can make you seem like an older person trying to be cool instead of someone who understands what a teenager sounds like and it goes through their mind. Um, also, in terms of the world building, I guess we kind of see what a shielder does. They protect souls from crossing over, from getting sent to either heaven or hell. But why does a hunter need to hunt them? Like, why is it important that these souls get to heaven or hell? Who commands them? What is what is the point of it all, you know? So I think in terms of world building and like building this tension between my main character and the antagonist, that's lacking. I mean, we get the point of him having to kill someone and she's standing against him because of that, even though they're falling in love or they feel an attraction, which is all right. But what exactly is behind a hunter's job? Like, we need to know that and we need to understand that as best as possible before we fully invest in Vincent's journey and why he, someone who actively hunts souls down, is trying to kill someone, you know? It's it's kind of there, but it's not really developed. So we have more questions, the bad kind of questions, like, because you're confused. Another concern of mine is the romance itself. I mean, it says she's not sure whether to punch him or hug him, but I'm not entirely feeling or getting the sense of romantic tension. I'm not getting a sense of why either one would be interested in the other. It's more just like, oh, they're on opposite sides of a war or, or of their respective jobs. But we don't really understand what is going on with them, like what their chemistry is like, what their relationship is like outside of they have opposite or opposing jobs. I guess what I'm saying is that if you promise the reader a paranormal romance, I think I got the paranormal stuff quite obviously there on the page. It needs some refining, particularly with Benson's job, but the romance is non-existent. Like, there's no promising romantic tension here. There's nothing that's making me swoon. There's nothing that, that makes me interested in this specific dynamic other than just they're going to have to stand against each other and that's it. Which, in essence, is quite interesting, but there needs to be more meat to this specific plotline. I don't know. So here we have Query 2. That was a little bit better than Query 1. Still a lot of issues, still a lot of unclear, confusing elements, but I think you can see a little bit of growth. Um, I am going to save my third and last Query letter for a separate post or a separate vlog because I want to see how that one worked versus these other two. In terms of submissions, in terms of agent requests, this one got just one request, I believe, out of 10 query letters. It got a full request and a rejection within the month. So again, maybe this query worked with one agent, but in general, it was quite lacking. In terms of how you write the beginning, if an agent reaches out to you or they know who you are because you pitched in a contest or you posted a query letter in a forum and they asked to see that query letter in full and pages once you had them ready. I think this is a good way to go. I don't recommend 
being too overtly familiar with the agent, just be as professional as you can be. That concludes today's query vlog. I will be uploading part two later on and I will be focusing on the very last query letter I ever sent and the one that got me my agent and the one that got me way more agent requests. So I can't wait to share that with you and kind of dissect it or dissect it fully. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will catch you next time. Stay awesome. Bye.